All right, somebody asked me to make a video about my Kraken Drive SSTOs here. So that is all the motivation I need to be obnoxious on the mic for a few minutes. So yeah, this guy right here is the Kraken Slayer, which is one of the prettiest jets I've built, but also the coolest because it has infinite fuel. Um, yeah, let's uh, dive in a little bit. I'll show you how this thing works and explain some of the challenges that I had with building it in the first place. All right, so the first issue really, and probably the biggest and most obvious one, is that I'm using a glitch as fuel. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with the Kraken Drive, basically how it works is um, docking ports have a magnetic attraction to each other to aid with docking. And if you connect two docking ports to the same craft but have them in range of that magnetic force, it will pull the craft forward like a reactionless force. Um, so what I have here is a whole ton, actually, 31 docking ports on each side all overlap. You can see my computer is just like, it just kind of spazzes out looking at it. <laughs> um, and then another set on the other side set to, uh, this one has to be set to zero, this one has to be set to 200% acquire force. Um, but these ones are on a piston that moves. So as you can see, once it moves up far enough, it snaps on and it immediately, the thing just starts going. Um, they don't produce a whole lot of thrust by themselves, but when you stack up a whole bunch of them at once, you actually end up with quite a bit of force. Um, this one actually has two rams. So I have this one, which is my main, um, throttle. And then I have a smaller one. If I switch here for maneuvering. Now this one produces just a little bit of thrust and it's much more reasonable when I'm trying to like finish up the end of a maneuver node or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to do a quick little um, crew transfer mission to my low carbon orbit station and I'll show you how this works in flight. So aside from the fact that these are Kraken bait and you've got a ton of parts on the end of a moving uh, a moving part, which is just always bad news if you've played around with any of the, uh, the DLC parts, the robotic stuff, um, just about anything on the end of a moving part is kind of rough. So that was a pretty big challenge right off the bat, getting that to behave. Um, the second thing is that the response, like how much force you get out of these things depends on the exact distance between them. As you can see, my, my G-force indicator here, the, the throttle response isn't linear and there's kind of a sweet spot. Um, above it or below it, it starts to scale down and you don't get quite as much thrust. They're also prone to getting stuck. If the docking ports get too close together, they will dock. And not only does that stick them together so they stop producing force, at least the ones that are stuck, but it also rearranges the structure of the save file for the craft so that even if you undock them, they're still like rigidly stuck there and they can't move. So you, as soon as it's stuck, the Kraken drive is basically gone critical, is what I call it. And there's nothing you can do about it but abandon ship and hope that it doesn't crash into anything expensive. Um... So getting the craft to behave along those lines and, and not spaz out on the drive and not get stuck and ruin itself um, was really tough because like getting getting thrust out of them is pretty easy, but getting it to work consistently without screwing up on you or self-destructing is really actually hard. Um, this took me quite a while to get these all together and get them running properly. And as you can see now, this is just, you know, I'm, I'm hands-free flying. I'm not even touching this. And it just it basically flies itself. This design is already really stable. Um, and uh, one of the nice things, actually, about the Kraken drive, it at first it threw me off, but I've come to... Oop, oh, I'm going a bit high. Oh, that's about right, I guess. Uh, I've come to appreciate it, is that because the way that it works involves moving around all of those uh, docking ports, you're... I'll get out of here. 
you're literally moving around a big ballast uh, with the throttle. And since it has to be all the way up before it engages, if the throttle hasn't engaged and the weapon or the weapon, the engine isn't quote unquote running, you can actually move it back and forth quite a bit uh, of the the, dis- the travel distance inside the craft to give yourself a little bit of ballast during like reentry and uh, some a- crazy atmospheric stuff. I landed this on Eve earlier and I had to do that because um, Eve's atmosphere is never happy to see you and I started tumbling. Okay, so now I'm in orbit. I'm going to switch. So this guy that's moving right now, this one has 31 docking ports on it to match the 31 on the other side. Um, The other one, this, only has three. I use this one for landing, um, and it's also good for doing maneuvers. Oh, I also can't time warp. Um, in a lot of my other videos, you'll you'll see me do physics warp while I'm doing burns because I like to use little engines to save on weight. But um, the Kraken drives rely on the sim quality. If, if your simulation quality goes yellow, it basically stops working entirely. The The forces change. It The game changes the way it calculates docking ports in yellow. So you end up, usually they'll get stuck. It'll either get stuck or it'll explode. Um, <laughs> so it's when I get up to dock here. There's I have another cur- uh, I have another Kraken Slayer already docked at the Gateway Station. So this may be a little bit hairy having two Kraken drives on one space station. Having one on a space station is already not. Oh crap! Is already not really recommended. Oh, my frame rate's starting to cry. It's going to hurt. Oh, man, we're yellow. I don't dare. (laughs) Oh, yeah, bad idea. There's too much. My computer can only handle one Kraken drive on screen at a time. That other one there is... Yep. I would not risk that. I'm too smart. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll send Rosbrid up with a different ship. I'm gonna bring it in backwards, right up above 50 kilometers, hit full power, and start to slow down with the Kraken drive. This thing can handle regular space plane style reentries, but you know, don't have to push it. Why should I? I do have unlimited fuel, after all. Powered by the soul of the enslaved Kraken. Let's flip. Boom. Time to get to the ground. Building it was a lot more like an actual engineering project although I, it was had more to do with figuring out how the code of the game worked than the physics of it um, <clears throat> at the end of this there is a, there's a battery I think it's a battery I can't see it um, but if there's any overlap like if, if even if it's inside the craft if the the moving part goes ba- past a, another part inside the craft and that's in between them, then it's it cuts off the force immediately. So I actually use that as like a safety to shut off when I try to pull it below a certain level because this one with it snapping into place like that is very prone to getting stuck. It's nice that it flies just as well in atmosphere as it does in space, though. Um, I guess there's other types of Kraken drives. I did a little bit of research after building this one. Um, there's a way to do it with landing gear or with pistons directly pushing on stuff. That's another one of those forces that's calculated wrong. (laughs) 
Um, but I've never really screwed around with those, and those ones behave really goofy at different altitudes. Um, this one, honestly, it, it acts a lot just just like an engine, except a little bit finicky. The the throttle curve isn't the throttle response isn't linear, um, and it's a little bit goofy to start it every once in a while. But it, it just runs. this into land. I wonder how this would be to do, how this uh, plane would be to fly with a joystick. I usually fly my planes with a joystick, but I started getting lazy and just using keyboard because I can land things with the keyboard and then I don't have to go get my joystick because it's usually set up with my switch. slow down a little here oh I probably did not need to slow down quite that much I was looking at my orbital speed Come on, get down there. Running on a runway. Oh, please don't eat the light. Uh, stop. Damn it. Whatever, at least it works in the water, too. Ah, overshot the runway like a noob. What a scrub. Oh, well. That was fun. So, yeah. Try a, try your hand at a crack and drive. I will shoot a link for this craft file and my other littler one in the description.